So last time I argued that to take some compact region K, the bounded region K in space time, uh, and take fields at say n points in K, okay, for any n, but all in K, and act on the vacuum, and you vary all the ends in the positions of these points, you will get it essentially the full Hilbert space on which the, all the operators are acting anywhere in the world. Okay? So this thing expands the entire Hilbert space because of the Riesz-Schneider theorem, which is uh, coming essentially because of the fact that the Hamiltonian is bounded below. Okay? The Hamiltonian is bounded below. This conclusion is difficult to avoid. Okay? This is several consequences. Okay? The first striking consequence is that it tells you that one cannot localize states because uh, you cannot localize states k in this quarter complement k prime separately in the sense of bond. You can't find projection operators because the states in k prime, the causal complement, are also in the same Hilbert space and they are already generated by these objects, okay? these uh, multinomials acting on the vacuum. So you cannot have a separate projection operator in the causal complement of K, which we call the K prime. That is not possible. Okay? So this is what we proved last time. We argued last time. And now I want to tell you an, an, an important result from which we'll follow some corollaries. The, the point is, suppose that now I take a field five at arbitrary, some arbitrary point X, phi of X. I want to show that this phi of x cannot annihilate the vacuum. Okay? It is a local field, cannot annihilate the vacuum. If it annihilates the vacuum, it is zero. Okay? Why? Take x anywhere. Okay? Then let x1 up to xn be in the causal complement of x. Okay? There are surely points like this. There is some k, this x is somewhere in space time. Take k, which is in the causal complement of x, point x. And you consider these operators for this k. Suppose, suppose now I multiply this by phi of x, okay. uh, phi of x is acting on all these vectors, but phi of x is coming to all, all these points since by cotality, so I can move it right through and act on the vacuum and I'll get zero. So I'll find that phi is an English vacuum, it also annihilates all these vectors. But these vectors form a dense subspace to the Hilbert space, so the field is zero. Okay. That's it. Okay. So you can't uh, one cannot escape this conclusion coming essentially from causality. Okay? So this is the problem. Okay? Uh, so now I don't want to repeat the proof, okay? but I want to give you the proof, the corollary which soon afterwards followed in the early days when people were trying to extend symmetries by including a Poincaré group with the internal symmetries. In the, uh, when was it? in the late 60s, okay, when SU6 was first born by uh, Gursi and Rajikati, where not relativistically they combined spin half with SU3 and got the group SU6. And they found that the elementary particle spectrum was fitting it very nicely. There was a lot of effort to see if it can be made covariant. That is, can you write this similar things? In quantum field theory, uh, relativistic quantum field theory, and there were many attempts. In the course of those literature, Corman proved the following theorem. Suppose the, th the theorem is like this: uh, the symmetry generators in any quantum, any local quantum field, is the integral of a local density, okay? d cubed x of some local density. A q may be the charge, the axial charge may be this, but it is some coming from Noether's theorem is some integral of some local density. Okay? And this equation, by the way, I forgot to write the time is here. This is the local density. It is conserved in time. So this is for all times. Okay? So you have all these operators okay, uh, coming from uh, symmetry generators. So he wanted to consider what happens. Uh, uh, what happens? Okay? Uh, suppose you are given these objects. Okay? So you don't know whether they are conserved or not. Is there such a notion as 
partial conservation. Okay. Can I have this uh, axial charge integrated and heat the vacuum, but nevertheless not equal to zero? Okay, it is something else. Can you have that? And Coleman proved that that is impossible. Why? Okay. He proved that if a uh, if Q here I have written down written down so the axial charge. Suppose it annihilates the vacuum, but it can be any charge. Okay. Suppose it annihilates the vacuum for all time. So it is a symmetry of the vacuum. Q5 is a axial symmetry, it is a symmetry of the vacuum. I don't know whether it is a good symmetry for excited state, but suppose it is a symmetry of the vacuum. Then he proved that this charge commutes to the Hamiltonian without any vacuum mention at all. So it is actually a symmetry of the entire system theory that you written down. So what you started out trying to prove uh, collapses right in the beginning. This is what he proved. Right? The proof is again very simple. Okay? And it is again a, a contingent on the use of the weak shear theorem. So what is the proof? For example, I have, I have removed the file. And suppose the integral of J0 d cubed x and L is the vacuum. Okay? But J0 has a time component also. So what I am given is this object. And I'm telling that it is zero. So the matrix element of this state with any set of momentum states is zero. From here, I go here, it's zero. Okay. So let me consider the total momentum, sum up all this individual momenta, and I consider uh, what happens if I move. take this equation, I have the total momentum here. So I make a full effect at K. Translation variance equation, where I say j is 0 at x is equal to exponential i p dot x, j0 at 0, exponential minus i p dot x. So the p is a total momentum operator, and this is a canonical relation when you have translation variance. So take this and put it here. Okay? So when I put it here, the, on the right hand side, okay, even the vacuum is 0, 1, this becomes 1. On the left hand side, the, the the set of all these things will give me the total, the operator P will become the sum of all the momenta. So I write the simple like capital P, I integrate on X, all the X is gone, and I'll get the D cube, delta cube of P times this matrix element. So this equation says that this matrix element vacuum to the total momentum of J0 at 0 is 0. So momentum is 0. Okay. This is coming from this equation and doing out the integration uh, using translation variance. Now, the problem with this equation is that I'm integrating. So, this is an operator, but it's acting on the left hand side. So, this momentum operator will become the sum of the moment here. By acting because it's a, the sum of the momentum operators on all the individual particles. So, this is a slight notation thing, but this P here is the total momentum of the state. Okay. So, look at this equation back. This equation is true, but I should have said that this is true for all time. From the very beginning, I am assuming that the integral of J0 is. In symmetry of the vacuum, time independent symmetry by understanding. So, DDT of this equation is correct. But the spatial derivative is also zero. Why? The spatial derivative is the commutator of uh, P, the translation operator, spatial translation operator with J. Uh, I don't see whether it is the uh, yeah. J i yeah. 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 p i p i with j i at zero. Okay. That is the meaning of the spatial derivative of this. Because this p i is acting on the left, but at t equal to zero. Okay. So that goes to zero. On the right, you have the vacuum, it is still zero. So this equation is the same as this equation. Uh, never mind this uh, chicken note, whatever it is, it is zero. Okay. So dt I showed you is zero, but now the Spatial derivative is also zero, but this equation is zero and p is zero. Then when, when I write x equal to zero, okay, uh, 
sorry, I, let me go to the right. Go back here. I am saying that this equation is zero, but people feel it. That comes from first dpt of j0 integrated in that equation is with that. And the spatial temperature comes because of the fact that this is evaluated at p equals zero. Okay. So I get this equation. This equation is zero for momentum zero. Okay. But if, suppose I take any arbitrary point x. Because this is the covariant thing, this point at x is e equal to this expression by again translation limits. There's a covariant field I can write like this. Now, acting on the left and the right, I, on the right, I'll get zero, one. On the left, I'll, I, at most, I'll get this total momentum times x. There's a phase I can calculate out. So you'll find that this equation is also true. Uh, right? I just have x here an arbitrary matrix elements okay, between the backhoe and the, uh, an arbitrary state here. Notice that I am taking an arbitrary state here because I can boost it to the uh, frame where it's all rest. The total momentum is zero. That can always, always be done because the momenta are pointing in the forward line code. So I can always go to the rest. So, what I have, so this equation is true for all pi. Okay. Okay. So, this, so that's what I have written here. Any state can be transformed to pi the p equal to zero. So even though I started writing this equation when the total momentum is zero, it didn't matter because I can always boost it back, translate it back to the state where it is at rest. Okay. So time derivative is not time derivative is zero by assumption as right at the beginning, right? Because I said that this is zero for all time. Okay. So it is a symmetry of the vacuum for all time. Otherwise, I don't know what I mean by what time you yeah. you write at the beginning, you lose time translation variance. That that's yeah. So restrict the matrix element of delta Q P times the coefficient. So the coefficient must be zero, whatever it is. No? Okay. So I have concluded that uh, this equation, the, the total divergence, co covariant divergence of the current, managed to the vacuum. But this is a local field. Okay. By Rich Schneider, which I have just now proved, local field cannot annihilate the vacuum unless it is zero. So it is the case that this op field as an operator is zero. Okay. From this equation in Rich Schneider, this operator d lambda j lambda is zero. J lambda is zero. Okay. If it is zero, I can integrate it on d cube dex on a special hypersurface, and you end up by hitting the time derivative of j zero x d cube x, and that is zero. So that is the same as this equation. So this, the Hamiltonian d zero commutes with the charge. So Coleman has proved his theorem. Okay. So the, um, this is a theorem that the symmetry of the vacuum is a symmetry of the world. Okay. So um, yeah, this is the, uh, the this is the proof that I found in this paper. There are some technical points, maybe not so technical points, one can worry about. But if there is a mass gap, I think this is always correct. Okay. The main problem I can see is that uh, uh, there, when you have, for example, when you have spontaneous breakdown of symmetries, then is it, is it still valid? I don't. Main trouble I have in understanding this proof is that when you integrate this, the spatial derivatives of J are supposed to go to zero by just integrating them. But that is not, we are doing quantum theory. J is not a classical function, it's a quantum theory. So how it behaves arithmetically is depends on the quantum state in which it is evaluated. There's no independent existence. You have to take some matrix element. So some selected set of quantum states are implied in this equation. Okay. What are they? Okay. I don't know. Okay. I think that there is um, maybe an issue. Maybe this result is not really correct if you have no mass gap. But uh, 
essentially, if you have no mass, if there is mass gap, which appears to be correct. So one cannot make a, a symmetry, which is just a symmetry of the vacuum, and not everywhere is symmetry, as was attempted by several people at that time. For example, when people were trying to develop current algebras. This was the time when people like Ben Lee and maybe Verasaro and so on were trying to develop current algebras. So this kind of issue came up and Coleman gave this proof. Okay. There is another theorem which also came up at that time, which is to me at that time I remember being very surprised. The surprise is that the following. Take any local field. I am not saying it is symmetry or anything. Any local field, but it will be a local field. Yeah. Integrate it on dq dx. Yeah. Call it q. Okay. Then the, I show you the that the Fabry Picasso theorem says that either this q is a function on t, vanishes on the vacuum for all t. So if it vanishes on the vacuum for all t, this is symmetry by the previous proof. Okay. So that will mean that this j I'm writing is actually a, the density of a conserved current, or the proof shows that this operator acting on the vacuum diverges. If uh, the matrix element, the op vector state you get, get is not normalizable. How do I prove that? Uh, it's unfortunate that this blob is blocking me. I'll tell you. So let me look. How do I, how did they prove it? It's a very short paper in PRL. Okay? A very nice paper. Okay. What did they do? They simply took this experiment okay, and took a look in the matrix element. Now, Q of T is, uh, can be written as a pen. T to X integration. No? So, Q of T, yeah, this is a, uh, they are taking the vacuum exponential value and they put T to exponential I P dot X, exponential minus I P dot X, patiently on both sides. Okay. So what happens? The, on the left hand side you have vacuum, so the spatial part goes away. On the right hand side, this is Q of T integrated on the cube dex. So the momentum operator computes the Q of T comes back and becomes one on this side. So this expression I started from is this one. Times the D cube dex. But D cube dex is a volume of the space time, the spatial slice. So it's infinite. So what what they, what does this say? Say that if QP is not zero on the vacuum, this is infinite. No, no two other possibilities. Okay. Uh, so, it's, so what is the conclusion? The conclusion is very physical. To write an expression like this, ever, I hope you won't do it. Then either this expression vanishes on the vacuum, which means it is a symmetry of the theory, or it is not well defined at all. Okay. It, vacuum is not in the domain of this operator. And it is not well defined at all in the quantum theory you are writing. Okay? So, for example, you write Lagrangian with local bits and integrate on DQ dx. This equation it seems to me already shows that that object we write does not exist. Okay? It seems to me like that. Okay? Right. Hmm? Assumption. That's what I am telling you. That if you. If we encounter expressions of this kind all the time. I gave you an example. The Lagrangian, we write as an integral of a Lagrangian density. Right? It seems to me that this equation says that that thing you are writing quantum, in quantum theory cannot exist. Because of, trans because of invariance properties, it cannot exist. Because of this equation. Seems to me like that. Because uh, you take the vacuum expectation value, of two of them, d cubed x. Okay. So Lagrangian, Lagrangian, multiply both of them at some time, same time. Use translation variance, so spatial translation variance. You'll find that it is either divergent or Lagrangian integrated out of vacuum is zero. It is zero means that the Lagrangian is divergence of some quantity and it is a symmetry of the system. What symmetry? I don't know, but it says it will be. Total divergence. Okay. So I have not thought about this issue for Lagrangian, but it seems to me to be saying that result. Okay. So um, it seems to me that this equation has strong implications worth thinking about. Okay. So 
What's the meaning of that? Right. I, 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 that is a cyclic method in the representation that we deal with. Okay. So the cyclic effort, the vectors in a say one particle, okay. take the vectors in the vacuum sector, say pi on and so okay. Let's not worry about spin. Okay. Take the neutral sector, all the neutral excitations in the quantum field. Okay. What do we do? We take the vacuum sector. And apply all uh, neutral fields, sorry, all the pond lobes and creation and addition operators and create the full Hilbert space. Okay. So the vacuum is a cyclic vector. Okay. So the cyclic vector is uh, now uh, thought of as living in the domain of any field of interest in the theory in the Whiteman, in the Whiteman <laughs> okay. Provided you smear it, it is in the domain of any local quantum field operator. It may intertwine the local quantum field from the vacuum situation to something else, like the Dirac field, or it may do something else, but it is in the domain of that operator of all local field operators in the, say, Strickler Weitman book. Okay. So that is what is being used here. So if something diverges from the vacuum, that operator is not part of your observable algebra, it is out of the picture. Okay. As an observable thing. I am wondering now, talking to you, whether this applies to Lagrangian, because this is, here, this is what we do all the time with Lagrangians. Okay. I have a, a lot, uh, yeah, I would say, I have a long standing prejudice against these Lagrangians and functional degrees used in the context of quantum field theory. And as time progresses, you get more and more, not extravagant context. Basic contradictions in using them. Okay. So maybe what I'm saying is correct. And there is some problem already in the basic definitions because of Fabri Picasso. Mm -hmm. I think what this statement means is this statement this only gap. Gap. So gap is there, this won't work. Yeah, gap is there, this won't work. The line that you're reading the proof ah. is that the vacuum is isolated in the spectrum of the universe. Yeah. It's that the general mass gap. Mass gap, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, I don't know if you are correct. I don't know where you are correct, of course. I, I put it in the cautionary phrase, but I don't know where I have used that result. Okay. I mean, I am writing this, but somewhere in this picture, I have used the existence of a mass gap. Hmm. You say that you say that we can combine this theorem with every Picasso theorem. Hmm. So you are talking about Coleman's theorem. Coleman's theorem again. My prop. The, I gave you the Coleman theorem, but where did they assume a mass gap? I, I am not able to show. This is where. That, that equation is only on p equal to zero. That is that is strictly true only on gap theory, but for a the spectrum B equal to zero is still there in the spectrum of the operators. But there could be soft states. Suppose I have n photons. Okay. There is still a state where the sum of all the photon moment is zero. I can have a photon going to the left and right. The total moment is zero. But what is the fact that there is a gap? If there is a gap, then I also know that is an isolated point in the spectrum. So it is well. So it is not part of the continuous spectrum. Okay? So it can be normalized to one. If it is not normalizable, then it is a part of the continuous, possibly a part of the continuous spectrum, but it may not be a normalizable state. Okay? So as a cautionary tale, I put it in okay? that statement in my notes. But in, whether it is essential, I don't know. Okay? And this is something that keeps bothering me, and maybe it is not true there is part in a symmetry breakdown. Okay. I don't know. Maybe it is not true for photons. Again, I don't know. Okay. Requires um, some deeper understanding of what is meant by spectrum of an operator, which I I suppose one learns only by as time progresses. <laughs> I have not fully understood that point. Okay. The complaint in terms of the so you never take expectation value of the I'm telling you to do it. It's an operator, right? 
course. Right. So what is there? It is classical. What is it in our textbooks? We are varying. So we are uh, taking some operators and taking products and so on. Then if you look in current. Oh, give a very good example. When you write JMU, AMU, you put two dots on both sides okay, to normal ordering in Lagrangian. Right? We do not. Schindler is it. What do you mean by two dots? Classically, it has no meaning. Normal ordering has no meaning, but we do it all the time. Hmm? So the moment you, have, like, you do this you and put competition relations, you are off from classical mechanics. That is a problem. Are we doing classical physics, quantum physics? My, so my statement is only that the property of the like, classical Lagrangian, the moment it enters the quantum regime, its properties may be changing in a very strong way. What all that I think you saying that if you take in Lagrangian to work with and you're taking the rest of the thing, you might end up with the Lagrangian. So it, it, the operator, oh, I see. But that does not tell you that the operator The operator itself cannot act. But what I have computed here is the norm of the operator QT, right? Uh, uh, so the norm of the vector QT and the vacuum. That is the divergent. That's what this shows. So the QT tail vacuum is not in the Hilbert space. So QT vacuum is not in the domain of the operator QT. It requires to be in the domain of the Lagrangian. So QT, so the part of the Whiteman axioms is that every quant uh, every quantum field is in that is in the domain of the vacuum. Vacuum is in the domain of every co uh, local quantum field. That is a basic definition of white white man and street. So QT, which is integral of d cube x, is diverging on the vacuum. Okay. So um, this operator you have written down, this integral is not in the vacuum, so it is not well defined as an operator. Yes. Yes, you are right, of course. So, so I, I should be more cautionary. So, the Lagrangian, Lagrangian is not is in decubed x times Lagrangian density, right? That will diverge here by this expression. But it's not in violation of the Wagner and No, no, you are right. It's not local operator, so you are right. But integral of log Lagrangian density will diverge on the vacuum. As an operator. You so say why is Lagrangian density an operator? Well, that's what we do. Uh, that was a mistake of this. But mm -hmm. what I'm saying is, when it diverges, it's not a disagreement with my point. You agree. I agree with you. I made a wrong statement. You're right. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, not, this is not a symmetry in divergence. That's what this is. The QT is not the D lambda, J lambda. But, uh, is, uh, it's not j charge density times integrated, it will divide. That's what it says. But uh, so the, since the Lagrangian density is not the it's not the density of any conserved current, okay, it will diverge. So you are you are sure to get problems when you do perturbation integration. Say you write time ordered product of the Lagrangian and so on. You are guaranteed to get divergence. We we get it, yeah. and we manage. People do normal renormalization and all those things. But we can see the problem, I want to say, already here, okay. which I think is nice. Okay. Right in the beginning, you know that I'm going to follow. <laughs> That's okay. And I do not understand what happened to the IPS between chasing and chasing. Yeah. Okay. On one side, it will act on the vacuum, so it will yeah. become one. On the other side, QT is integrated on D cubed X, so a spatial translation won't change it. So it goes up, jumps over and acts on the vacuum, becomes one again. Okay. So let me conclude this and I then go to Raphael's uh, work okay? and that will uh, take us into the many mysteries of local quantum field theories. So what this, uh, what is the conclusion we are reaching? Okay? In non-relativistic quantum mechanics, we have bond localization. Okay? What is bond localization? Uh, bond localization says that if K and K prime are spatial region at some time, we project is PK and PK prime. Okay. So K and K prime is uh, on a spacious slice and the intersection is null, backward. Okay. 
term. Then the statement is if I take any state and apply TK and any uh, state chi and apply TK prime, these are orthogonal. Okay. Uh, so T, TK on psi gives a state on localized K and TK prime on chi gives another state localized in K prime and then formula square gives you the probability density localized in K or for localized in K prime. This is the canonical interpretation of quantum mechanics. So, so we have got this orthogonal localization. Point I want to make is this orthogonal localization simply fails the quantum field theory. It is not true. Okay. Uh, what we have is a much, it, it can be shown to fail in many ways. Uh, one nicest, one nice is use Riesz Schneider theorem. So you have two space like regions. This K and K prime are on a spacious slide in uh, bond. So they are clearly spatially causally separated. Uh, but uh, you, know, you can use Riesz Schneider, get the same result I showed you. Okay. So, uh, what we have got is a much weaker notion, different notion of, lo of localization, which is called uh, by Bert Schroer as causal or synthetic localization. It simply says, but it is not localized in state. It's, uh, in, uh, um, quantum mechanics, we confuse states with operators. They are not the same. Okay. Uh, we think that density matrix is an operator in quantum mechanics. This is not true. Okay. Time evolution of density matrix, time evolution of a state is after a certain time it goes like exponential minus IHT, right? That's how it goes. Okay. Acting on the state, you get the state that on a state wave function side, the operator is exponential minus IHT on the wave function. So it, uh, at time t, so the density matrix has exponential minus IHT, then psi psi exponential plus IHT. Okay. This is the way this density matrix transforms. Whereas an operator transforms with the exponential plus IHT operator exponential minus IHT. This is a change of time. Okay. If you write the time evolution of state and the operator, there's a change of sign in the evolution because of duality. So they are not transforming in the same way at all. That already shows that they are not the same of same stuff you are dealing with. Okay. Here in this issue gets highly elaborated, uh, blown, and we end up by saying that we don't, you cannot localize states at all. If all that you can do, do is localize observables, and if you choose, uh, so you have uh, the notion of algebra of lo uh, operators localized in some region, so region K, which is called AK, localized DK prime, localized in AK prime, and all that we get is that they commute by causality. This is how we get. And from this, we have to infer whatever we can and keep going. This is not, this equation, by the way, is called Einstein causality. Okay. Okay. So, uh, can you change the slide? Uh, I will go into this. Um, uh, this is something else. So, I don't want to talk about it. I can't hear. Can you come forward? Okay. I'm saying something about the what is Can somebody tell me what he said? What did he say? Okay. My hearing is not very good. Okay. So I hear a hearing aid is only partially useful. So to tell me. Mention that uh, if an operator and then is the vacuum, the operator has to capture the field. Field, got a field, yeah. You want me to repeat it? In what context? Oh. Right. That equation is used in the statement in the proof of the Coleman theorem. In the Coleman theorem, Coleman ends up by proving that d lambda j lambda acting on the vacuum is zero. Okay. But d lambda j lambda is a local field, is acting on the vacuum and is zero. So by visual theorem, the operator d lambda j lambda itself is zero. Okay. So the visual theorem is telling me. Total divergence of J is zero. So I integrate on D cube dex, I get D zero or the charge of J, J zero, integrated charge. In so, fact, so D zero of the integral charge is zero means it commutes to the Hamiltonian. Yes. So it is uh, exact symmetry of the entire system. Okay.
So that was a trend. trend, trend. So now I want to start today about an experiment okay, which Rafael Sorkin proposed, well, described long ago. And his motivation, and I remember arguing with Bala for many a day, was he was convinced, he is still convinced, that quantum field theory is not adequate when you have quantum gravity. He does not want. Uh, he, well, he has another way of looking at it, but using quantum field theory as is normally used, he thinks is simply inadequate to deal with issues in quantum gravity. And he has many arguments around these directions. Okay. Um, he has a whole interim. Uh, he has a whole inter new interpretation of quantum mechanics, a quantum field theory, which he has developed with Fred Dauker, Sumati Surya, and some other colleagues, okay? Okay. which uh, some of you may know, may be interested, that in his papers, he quotes of all people, you may know the name Nagarjuna. I don't know if you know. He was a, a logician in Nalanda, in 12th century or something like that. Okay? And Nala these people, these Buddhist logicians, had developed many valued logic even at that time. Okay? They had developed, instead of a two valued logic, they had already conceived of and developed many valued logic. I have not read Nagarjuna, apparently Raphael <laughs> read Nagarjuna, and he quotes Nagarjuna. And he develops a new interpretation of quantum theory observations. You see, quoting this many valued logic. As Ampasa, he just quotes that this is in this earlier work that you refer to, and he quotes Nagar. <laughs> She's rather interesting. Okay? So let me go on. What is the experiment? So I'll describe the experiment, then we'll continue next time. Okay? So, yes, no doubt Bihar had a very glorious history at one time. <laughs> so the he wants to, Rafael wants to show that uh, standard interpretations of quantum mechanics and observations as a problem. Okay. What's the problem? He takes, uh, let's say, you know, using the conventional language, at time less than this region one, there is a state row, maybe a density matrix, whatever. A state row it is shared by Alice and Bob. They know what it is. A time less than T1. Okay. Then, at some point, uh, uh, step one, Alice may or may not measure an operator A hat. She doesn't tell Bob. Okay. Uh, may or may not measure an operator head in that region one. Okay. So, that will change. By this activity, if she had measured it, the state will change in region one. If she has not measured it, row, row will not change in region one. Then you go from this region one to another time slice from one and take another spatial region where you have a spatial region size two. Okay? So this part of the spatial so region here is time like to region one. Okay? And the Cause causal complement is not time like it is related with the region one, the space like within the region one. So this is time like and there is space, space like. So the, because uh, I have collapsed the wave function on this slice okay, because of the entanglement problem, standard interpretation of collapse of wave packets, okay, what is happening here will also be affected. So I just applied the did. So, as is measure something here, at this step, she will be measuring something of a state on this spatial slide and making a measurement here, and then you collapse the wave packet and also change what is there. Okay? That's the argument. If I remember correctly, I'm going to check again. Okay? Now, take another region 3. Okay? Time like related to 2, this region. So, this region 3. Space like relation to region one, but time like relation to 
in to put this region to measure and if you make a measurement uh, at time bob machine makes a measurement in region 3. But bob's measurement will look at what is happening received by region 3 it's coming from here. Okay? But this has been affected by the measurement here, which has affected the state in the entire uh, size. So we can really be informed of what has happened in the part. So we have a violation of causality. Okay. Because 3 is uh, space side to 1. Okay. So the crucial assumption here is that, uh, for example, you have some entangled system at some time, and you make some measurement, some region in that time, it will affect the entire state in that time slice. If you make that assumption, you are troubled. Okay. Because it's, uh, the trouble is that you have this idea of collapse of the wave packet and you change the whole thing on the time slice. So, the fact that you have uh, chain one, then you are going here, it will change what is happening here completely. It, it also change what is happening here. But that is what is moving by region 3. The 3 is arranged to be space like to region 1. So, you have a violation of causality. Okay. Because by measurement here, Bob can tell whether Alice made a measurement here or not. Okay. So, what is the problem? Okay. Why is this happening? No, it is supposedly, uh, that's a problem, if you like. So, what is the measurement theory in quantum field theory? Relativistic the quantum field theory. But the field collapse, the idea is which has no, like, which does not, as you relativity as a quantum field theory. If there is enough contradiction to the wind packet collapse, then we really Or you have to say that there is no measurement theory at all in quantum field theory. So it is not a physical theory. We do it. Ah, so we have to know what we are doing, you know. <laughs> I think it is very reasonable to insist that we should have some understanding of what we are doing. Okay? Yeah. And Raphael is, is uh, I was just beginning to read a review. The canonical assumption is that the measurement theory of four nine one applies also to quantum field theory. It's a canonical assumption. Whether it is articulated that way, maybe. Well, there are many. I just was reading a review, and there are literally several hundred papers discussing this issue. Affair is picking up the canonically accepted interpretation of quantum theory, presumably globally correct, and he shows that if you do that. There is a conflict with causality. Yeah. Okay. So, how do I resolve this causality? Resolve this issue is not a trivial problem. And uh, let me say, nearly for 20 years, there was no, no resolution. I think people did not even look at this paper. It's a very nice paper, very readable. He actually does calculations with creation and generation operators and gives examples. He works it out, see what happened. And what he says is capex. Then subsequently, um, there were papers by Fred Dauker and so forth on this issue. And eventually, it was solved, I'll tell you as I keep going, by Fuster and his group in England, Leeds, maybe. And he is a collaborator of Birch and others. They proved, uh, they showed that there is an issue here because of the implicit assumption that you can localize the states in two regions like this. Okay. So, the localizability of a quantum state like here and here, it creates problems. Okay. So, they developed a elaborate machinery for measurement theory in quantum field theory, in algebraic quantum field theory, which we did study. But I will outline it as I keep going. And it uses, how do I get integration from here to here? It uses, uh, say, time evolution. Okay, there's some time. Okay. So, how do I do time evolution? Well, you have to maintain time evolution, maintaining causality. Okay. So, the, uh, time, the signal should propagate according to the hyperbolic differential equation governing the system. Okay. So, the only method, mechanism we know to do it, any method. One method we know to do it is what is called the Epstein-Glasser 
cost effective efficiency. So they take uh, few few words, rely on that, and make some up, uh, pre rather precise assumptions on what is meant by measurement in quantum theory in their opinion, and found that roughly is a problem disappeared. Okay? So they there's a scope that this is a powerful example of the principles of quantum field theory as we know it today. Okay. Algebraic quantum field theory as we know it today. Okay. So I will come to that, but meanwhile, as a preliminary, I want to get to hit you with a sequence of results of the lack of localizability of quantum states, the algebraic quantum in local quantum field theory and its consequences, okay, physical consequences for people doing quantum information and so forth. I'll uh, show you what happens. Okay. Some very surprising results come. I'll show it to you. Okay. Then I will come back to this and uh, prove how maybe Raphael can be uh, overcome. Actually, but some of his collaborators don't, don't quite agree with uh, Fuster's paper. So there is still a dispute. But uh, in any case, I think it is a very fundamental problem. We have to know what we are doing. Okay. At least roughly, you should, uh, I don't jump into a train and uh, end up in some random place, good house thing. <laughs> I had to know where I'm going. You know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what uh, Rafael is insisting is that there are problems. For example, how do I make measurements in space time regions? How do I make measurements? There's no projector. How do I make measurements? Okay. Because there's no projector which will put observables there. How do I do it? So, Rafael wants to say that um, if you do path integration in mean, in the correct no Euclidean business, the correct metric, okay, then all the trajectories, which they use this finger Keldish formulation, and all the things that fall there will be a model squared and that will give you the probability. But then there is a problem. Okay. Can you make this into a proper framework uh, compatible with quantum theory, all the assumptions? So he and Faye have written several papers on this issue. They are not trivial. Okay? Uh, so, do, are you getting a probability measure which is which has the right prob properties of uh, what they call subjectivity and all those things? There's a um, there's a set of issues which will immediately be asked of you if you start doing this. Okay? And he seems to have uh, answered them because. I saw Schuster writing a paper on causal set theory, where it is based on these ideas. So, and Raphael is a very, very smart person. So, he would have done it. So, I have not read those papers. I want to read them. It will be educative, but I have not done it. So, we'll come back to that and I'll continue next time. I'm open to questions. I think there is a greater interest in the response I found today. And May hopefully um, next time will be uh, next Wednesday will be your more interesting maybe. Then I want to say that I left a hole in my arguments regarding spin half and and causality using Tomita exactly because of sign min, minus sign you may remember. Uh, well, over the weekend I did solve it. Okay, uh, uh, and it is compatible with what I understand from the literature, but it brings us to something which um, which uh, brings us to this, uh, how quantum field, for example, how do I get Majorana fields, how do I get Weil fields, okay? what is the relation, okay? how do I get rid of the J square being minus one and so forth, okay? and how do I get, how do I get uh, anti-commutation relations for quantum fields, can be solved okay, purely from the framework of Tomita Takisaki. I will maybe come back to it towards the end later. And if there is time, personally, it is uh, very interesting that in the course of that, I found out something called Kunz algebra. Some of you might have heard about it. There was Rajesh Kobukumar's thesis 
with gross was actually all Kunz algebra applications for large and matrix models. So the Dr. Hawk Roberts casually say there's a Kunz algebra which interprets spin zero with spin half, spin half with spin one. They write down the algebra. Algebra is very simple. And it gives amazing things like moving the local algebra from region O to another region. You can parallelly transport whole algebras using this. Okay? And they use this to prove spin statistics theorems and also bridge statistics, CPT theorem. They proved all this with, with great generality okay? using the Kunz algebras. So there is Taiwan interest in stamina, I'll tell you. Okay? But uh, Krishna says, no, <laughs> there won't be stamina among the students. You will see. Okay? If there is no stamina, I am not propagating. I am not into the business of propaganda, so I don't care. <laughs> okay. Why from step one to step two or step three? How do you evolve in time? Some, some hyperbolic, some Hamiltonian. Yeah, you need some time evolution operator. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, hmm? Hamiltonian, I didn't say anything. Hamiltonian is a different beast. It is coming from the Poncari group. Yeah. So, uh, it is a simply the generator of the trans time. What? <laughs> you can choose anything with a spectrum in the upward uh, forward light code. Okay? Fine, you can use that as a Hamiltonian. So, uh, Lagrangian is a different thing. Okay? I, it, it is a more ambiguous guy. It's like people in uh, Bengaluru changing sides from one to the other. Here also they change sides. What it is, I don't know. It's classical quantum. What is it? I don't know. <laughs> but there are problems in using Lagrangians, which we can see already here. Maybe they can be resolved, but I don't know the resolution. I have not thought about it, but yeah, it's worth thinking. At least because many of you are doing activities in this. So maybe you should know what you're doing. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe knowing too much is dangerous. <laughs> so I don't know about that. Okay. Hmm? I do not understand really what this was there. The Lagrangian density, Lagrangian is the integral of a Lagrangian density. Lagrangian density is a local operator. If you integrate it, that operator actually on the vacuum is either zero or diverges. Okay. If it uh, is zero, the Lagrangian density is, is a, a density of a conserved charge okay. by this Coleman theorem. Okay. But what is that charge? I don't know anything, any charge. Hmm? I no, you wrote it. No, people write it. No, they, they write it on when they write L, yeah, they write then they put two dots. The classical quantum, I don't know. Is it quantum? If you write functional integral, then the whole thing gets messed. I don't know what it is. Okay. But as is written, for example, the original proofs of Pauli, uh, Schwinger, and so on on, on CPT was treating Lagrangian as a operator, quantum operator, which is anti-commuting. And they got some result. And they, uh, in fact, as I remember Abdul Salam telling me repeatedly, that the current that comes MU, MU in the gas theory, you should never normal order it. Why? Because charge conjugation already makes sure that the vacuum, uh, the normal, uh, the back part, A dagger, A dagger type comes cash down. He kept insisting. Okay? But for other things, you have to put two dots. Two dots. They do people m squared times phi squared, two dots on both sides. What do, that makes only sense for operators. Then you integrate d cubed s. Phi squared, two dots, integrated. Okay. Is it zero on the vacuum? I don't think it is zero. But then what is it? It is infinite. Is it true? I have done the calculation myself. It is infinite. Huh? There is also 
So if the Hamiltonian is the integral of a Hamiltonian density, there is a problem already. That's what you write. Yes. So I am telling the Hamiltonian exists. Now you, you are reminding me, but there is a problem with the Hamiltonian density. So T0, 0, there is a problem. When you write Tdh as integral of T0, 0, there is a problem. Okay. Now that's what we do. When you write, uh, if it is not an operator, is it classical? Then I, you are doing classical business, I have nothing to say. Uh, but that is, you can do that. You can try considering theories where vacuum, the ground state is not in the domain of the operator. There is no cyclic, actually. What he means is, he said there is no uh, time translation, uh, space time translation invariant. Or let's say, the general case, I suppose. A low state which is invariant under the isometry. Okay. I think that is what will happen. I don't know. Okay. For example, DC, uh, I think this I have not tried proving, but I would guess that what is meant by translations here for the vacuum will be this asymmetries of the background metric okay. acting on the vacuum is zero. Okay. I think that's what will happen. Then this kind of theorem will say that the integral. Of something like T0 acting on that will diverge. Then it is not a cyclic vector. Then there is problem. Okay. And then what is a cyclic vector? You don't have a cyclic vector. Okay. I, let me say if there is no cyclic vector from which you can construct a GNS representation, I don't know the consequences. I have not come across any such theory. And maybe you can replace it with something else. I don't. Okay. Even our friend Ed and Robert Longo don't do it. Chandrasekhar and, and Pennington. They don't do it. But suppose you do it, what happens? I don't know. So, yeah, there are issues here we have to resolve. Okay? So, I'll come continue with uh, the structure of uh, quantum field theories. I I'll explain to you briefly. What is called the split inclusion? Hey, there is a diver, there is a, a universal divergence. When you try computing entropy, there is a universal divergence which will happen in quantum field theories. This is well known. Okay, uh, there is also a universal way of regularizing it by something called the split inclusion, which uh, came in the literature on algebraic quantum field theory. I'll uh, explain what it is. And how it works, and show some um, strange examples that emerge from here. Cover that topic a little bit. Then maybe there is time I'll go back to my spin half case, complete that task. Then let's see what happens. I don't know if there, there will be time. If there is time, I'll do something else. We have some new results on case QCD phases. Okay. Um, but without using which uh, loops <laughs> or uh, Euclidean functional results uh, directly as an uh, as an operator theory, we have certain results, and uh, they seem to be not coherent with what people are finding numerically. So it will be interesting to know what is the relation. So we will take that approach. Yeah. So from evidence groups. So if you, you see that the vacuum is cycling and separating from the broken algebra, then the only conclusion you can draw out of that for the energy density is that it's uh, I expect it's, it can contain negative value. I think I better come down. I removed my dam. We can talk. Okay. I don't know how to describe it. Yes, it's out of it. So, so what I'm saying is that I'm just continuing from uh, Edmonton's notes. Uh, you say that cycle is a property for the vacuum. The only implication it has for the energy density is zero zero. Is that it's eigenvalues are negative. That's the vacuum. And still you have the cyclicity and property property for the 
Okay. 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 Either 
Surely it is total divergence of the current total divergence of the current or it is divergent, it can be divergent. So if the analytics the vacuum of our lines, it should the J should be conserved. Or that operator is not depend on the other. So it's a normal order for the Lagrange that annihilates the vacuum for all times. But then you're saying that the Lagrange then just cannot be done or so on. So it's contrary to things that we can That's why I think it's not correct in the order of the I think there are only several things. Something should be true in one of the people from the simplest example, the zero can be If you have a Message can be completely cannot write in the I don't know how to do it. The is getting in the same. There is no other definition about it. Or no underlying. I don't want the guarantees. I don't want to. It's not I read. I'm missing something in this articulation. It's come back to me by copying it. For it. So it's kind of like that. I'm not sure. We will make it safe for you to find out. Why is step 3 required here? Like, even in step 2, I can say that step 2. This thing. Say that P is making measurement. It depends on what happened in region 1, even if space like. Ah, okay. so, the, point. the problem is that yes, to be even in the point of spacious lines for the thing, point of view, so we have a state break from the spacious side. You make a measurement here, it products the data packet all over. That is the problem. Yeah. It's clear in step two. Why do you need step three in the step? I want to say here, go that I can see something coming from. Left hand side portion of that side. But left hand side carries information on step zero. Uh, step one is space like with to step three. So I got information on step one, region one to region three. That means it is this. Yeah, that's clearly human step two. That's what I said. Yeah. The idea is that you are not aware of step two. If I form this making machine, you can check. Somebody did something. Somebody does something in the you, you said B is measured at two. So measurement is done. So I will say that. So I will say maybe a measurement step two. Base like related to say Q or then Bob will get information from her what she has done before. <laughs> so they are going to get it. They are going to get it. They are going to get so you can say say it without that irrelevant. Very right. Simple then. But uh Rafael writes it in the three step. Yes, we can discuss it. There are issues that I talked to people working in this field some time ago. They were not convinced that you said paper is all a paint issue. They were not convinced. Yeah, jobs when I was different, so great out there. He was protesting when I said that the issue is gone. He said no, then he gave some reason. So we can come back to that discussion.